we are going to write the applications of putting this equation. This is another case. This is the particle in a three-dimensional potential box. In the previous lecture, we already have read about the one-dimensional infinitely deep potential well. And now here we are going to read about the three-dimensional potential box. The case is quite similar that we have a particle of mass m, momentum p, energy e in a potential field v equals to zero when x belongs to zero and a, y belongs to zero and b, and z belongs to zero and c. That means we will, if we draw it, if we sketch it as before, we will get nothing but a cube, just like a box-like structure where this is zero to a along x, z is zero to b along b and sorry y, and this is zero to c along z. And v equals to infinity outside. So here we have written v equals to infinity outside. So if we draw the boundaries here, so from these boundaries, outside region you have potential is infinitely large and inside this boundaries, that means inside this box-like structure, you have potential v equals to zero. Now, first, we have to find that the, where the particle may exist. But why we are going to find? It is because our aim is to find the wave function associated with the particle which is in this kind of potential field and we have to find the different energy states of that particle. So, if you have seen the previous lecture for the one dimensional potential well, and I must refer it because we are not going to redo the calculations which we have done, but we have to use the results of the calculations here. So, uh, the same logic follows here that if the particle belongs to this kind of potential field, the particle can only exist where v equals to zero. It is because when v equals to infinity, that means in this region from this boundary and outside, the particle can't exist. Because if the particle exists in this region, that means the particle must possess infinite amount of energy, which is unphysical. So the wave function psi should be zero. But inside this, where v equals to zero, the particle may exist because this is a force-free region. So the particle only exists inside the box and there is no way to come out through the box for the particle. So this is confined inside this box. So this is a three-dimensional box or potential box. So first, if we have to find the structure of the particle, first we have to assume the wave function. So the wave function must be a three-dimensional wave function here that we have written psi x, y, z. So this is the wave function associated with the particle and the three-dimensional Schrodinger equation which have the structure del 2 psi x, y, z plus 2 m e by h cross square 2m by h cross square e minus v psi x, y, z. Now, as we know that, if we have to modify the Schrodinger equation for this potential field, because we know that the particle only exists, that means psi only exists where v equals to zero, and where v equals to infinity, psi equals to zero, so we must make this v equals to zero. So if we consider this equals to zero, this part, this equation will reduce to this one. So this is the Schrodinger equation for our case, where you know probably this is the del square. Del square is nothing but the Laplacian operator and the form of this operator in Cartesian coordinate system is this. So with this form, if we if you use this psi x, y, z, this will look like this. And here we have written this energy E as a combination of Ex, Ey, and Ez. So these three is we have here three dimensions, x, y, and z. So they are representing these three E's. Okay. Now if you uh, split it and uh, a little bit manipulation give you a, an equation like this. Now we already have read about the separation of variables. So in the uh, about the separation of variables you read in the last lecture, 
and uh, if we use that one here that is psi x y z equals to we can write combination of three wave functions that is x y and z the first wave function capital x this is solely dependent over the x axis the second one is solely the capital y solely dependent upon y and z capital one this is solely dependent upon the z axis and always remember that these are the wave functions this is x dependent wave function this is y dependent and this one is the z dependent wave function so now if we replace this psi x y z with this form then the first term here you have the delta psi x y z del x2 here if you use this one the y and z these two terms will be must be treated as a constant so we will get this form that y z this two were outside and d2x dx2 plus 2m ex h cross square we just have taken this one here 2m ex x y z instead of here we are writing x y and z this one like this and then in the second term d2y dy2 with constants as x and z and so on now if we divide both sides with the wave function psi x y z that means x y and z capital x capital y and capital z this will give us 1 upon x d2 x dx2 plus 2 m e x y h cross square 1 upon y d2 y d y2 plus 2 m e y by h cross square and 1 upon z d2 z dz2 plus 2 m e z h cross square this equals to 0 and you see each bracketed term here are dependent over if the first one is dependent over x this one is over y and this one is over z and they are independent variables independent to each other so if you have this kind of equations you can easily say that each bracketed term must be equals to zero otherwise this kind of equation is not possible so if we extract just we have written the bracketed terms here and so we will get three different equations from here these are written here now from the first equation let us take the first one this one fourth equation of course so here if we multiply i have rewritten the equation here and if we multiply the both sides with the wave function x then this will take the form this and now this is a familiar form to you this is nothing but the one dimensional schrodinger equation for the case of the infinitely deep potential well what you have to do you just have to replace this x with the psi x so that will be if you replace it with this one that will be exactly equal to the equation you have seen in the previous lecture so similar manner you will get an equation for the y axis and an equation for the z axis now the way to use that we already know the solution of this equation we have seen in the previous case that means for the infinitely deep potential well there you have the instead of x you have the psi x i already have mentioned so psi x equals to root upon 2 by l n pi x by l because the span was l span of the uh, well was l but here the span is a so the solution the wave function here is x so the solution should be x equals to root under 2 by a sine n pi x by a and this one for y is n pi y by b and sine n z pi z by c now here you see we have done a little modification in the previous case we just have written n but here we have written nx ny and nz this are because we have here three dimensions and combination of these three will give you a set nx ny nz a set of quantum numbers and that will determine the state of the the quantum state of the particle so if you combine these three the wave function will look like just the combination here so psi x y z and suffixed by the nx ny nz 
So this is 8 by ABC root and and then sine of this sin n pi x by a sin n y pi y by b and sin n z pi z by c. So here this z as I already have mentioned is giving you the quantum state of the particle therefore we have written here also because psi is a eigenfunction here and the energy values are the eigenvalues. Now let us find the energy values. How we can find we have written e equals to ex plus ey and ez. Now if you think about the one dimensional case in that case you have ex equals to n square pi square h cross square by 2 m l square now here we have ex so that modification we have to do here so this will be nx square pi square h cross square by 2 m a square because the span is now here a similar manner for ey that will be n y and b the changes i am mentioning here just that and this one is the nz by c and if we combine all these three, this will look like this. So this is the energy eigenvalue of the particle. So the particle which is confined inside a three-dimensional potential box, the form of the wave function should be this and the form of energy should be this. Now we are going to uh, do a bit simplification. What kind of? So first let's, let us think about the ground state. So as before, I must mention here the ground state is again y uh, sorry the e 1 1 1 because n equals to 0 is not an acceptable value. So e 1 1 1 that will give you pi square h cross square and within the bracket 1 by a square 1 upon b square 1 upon c square. So this is the form of the ground state. Now if we do a little simplification little bit simplification that considering a equals to b equals to c equals to l then this will look like this so here we are considering a cube and this is a special case but this one is the general expression for the wave function this is for the wave function and this is for the energy for the particle now you see here for the first excited state if we write this one as e112 nx equals to 1 and y equals to 1 and nz equals to 2 so this will give us 1, 1, so this is L, so nx square, ny square, so this is 1, this is 1, and this is 2 square equals to 4. So that will give you 6. So 6 pi square h cross square by 2 ml square. And the corresponding wave function associated with that energy, that is E112, is psi112. In similar manner, if we write E121, the value for the energy will be same. But the eigenfunctions which are associated with this energy state is psi 1 to 1. And if we have an another value like u 2 1 1, the value is same, but the eigenfunction is different, that is psi 2 1 1. So we obtain three different eigenfunctions again a single eigenvalue. This is the value, the single eigenvalue. So we have for a particular energy state, we have three different wave functions. So if we found this kind of cases, these are known as degenerate state, degenerated states. So here we obtain three different eigenfunctions or wave functions against a particular energy value. So we will say that this is a threefold degeneracy. In similar manner, if we obtain n number of energy states against a particular n number of uh, eigenfunctions against a particular energy state, that will be the end fold degeneracy. So uh, think about the situation where you have a particular energy state and in the previous lecture we already found that these wave functions must have different structures for the different for the different energy value or the for the different quantum states for n equals to 1, for n equals to 2, for n equals to 3 that we have seen. So here also we have the combinations of nx, ny, nz. So for each of them, each set of the quantum numbers, we have different energy states and some of the states are the degenerated state as we have found this is the first excited state is a degenerated state and here we found that this is a threefold degeneracy. Thank you.